Hey everybody, it's Fit Rockstar, Isabel Terrell, and I'm with the awesome, massive, I mean really freaking massive, <laughs> Mr. USA 2017, a uh, several time Olympian champion, Derek Lunsford. Thank you, Derek, coming all the way from Tampa. Yeah, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah. It's, it's been a minute since we talked, so it's good to see you. Yeah, yeah. do you need a bigger table, man? <laughs> we can upgrade next time. Yeah, yeah. you're <laughs> freaking huge as a house. What's yeah. What's the deal? Open, right? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, right now, I'm focused on the 212. Um, you know, that's that's a title that's been eluding me for a few years now. Um, this will be my fifth Olympia in the 212. Um, so now that I'm with um, my new coach, Hani Rambod, and Eva Jr. Nutrition, I will be uh, dead set focused on that 212 title. Well, I mentioned open because everybody's talking. It's like, Derek's so huge. I mean, yeah. right now, your weight is what? Pushing 250, 255. Jesus Christ. Yeah. My yeah. God. How yeah. much is Hani feeding you? <laughs> uh, enough to be 250, 255. Yes, man. Uh, no, it's, it's been good working with him so far. We um, got together right after last year's Olympia. So it's about the first three So years. what's the story? How did you find him? Well, um, pretty much everybody knows Hani Rambod. And sure. so me as a... An aspiring bodybuilder. I've always known who Hani Rambod was or is, and um, I've seen his track record with other athletes. You know, Jay Cutler, Phil Heath, Jeremy Buendia, a bunch of uh, I mean, 19 Mr. Olympia wins under his belt with athletes. So, I mean, his track record speaks, speaks for itself, and um, I've always admired him. And and um, after this year's Olympia, we we you know touch base, we backstage, and we started talking, and um, you know one thing led to another, and he believed in me, and I decided to, you know, move on. And, now, didn't you go up to him at one of the shows and say, hey, you know, like a fanboy or something? I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, I I kind of love that story actually. Um, I feel like in a way I I tried to set that one up though because I always call it like ignorant confidence. I, I don't know what you know it actually is, but when I and back in 2000. 2016, I was a middleweight, and so that would be, I competed under 100, and, I was like 170 pounds, 175 pounds, 2016, and I went up to him at the Arnold Classic, I was about four weeks out from my show, and I went up to him at the Evagen booth, and I said, hey, can you, I basically said, can you make me the next Mr. Olympia, and we both looked, exactly, we both looked at each other like, okay, you know, I just kind of laughed, and and I expected that, and that's kind of why I said that, because I, again, that ignorant confidence, I just believed that one day we would meet again, and we would have a different conversation, and I would be able to bring it up to him and say, do you remember in 2016 when we met for the first time, and I said that silly, you know, asked you that silly question, can you make me the next Mr. Olympia, and we both laughed about it, and and that's the first thing I told him backstage after this year's Olympia was, remember that conversation? He goes, oh, man. You know, he started laughing about it again. So, um, but, but the reason I did that was, one, I felt like um, that was going to happen. That would be a, kind of a cool story. But it also drove me to, to accomplish that. That was a goal of mine was to get to the point where I could work with a coach at his caliber, you know, cause I wasn't at that caliber yet to be coached by him. I felt like I needed time and mm -hmm. uh, to put the time in and, and to develop my physique for him to want to coach me and believe in me. Mm -hmm. Derek, what fires you? What, why do you do bodybuilding? Well, I mean, this wasn't like something you weren't born, yeah. you know, with muscles and stuff, right? Yeah. I guess what fires me now, like what motivates me now is different than what it, it was before. Um, in the beginning, I was a, before bodybuilding, I was a wrestler. And so wrestling uh, came to an end for me, or I, I chose to stop wrestling and focus on school. But truly, I wanted to still be competitive in something. I, I've always done sports my entire life. And um, once wrestling was, was done, I, I wanted to, to do something different. Mm -hmm. And instead of continuing wrestling or fighting or any, anything like that, I said, okay, let me try this bodybuilding thing. I had just, you know, I seen some guys in the gym who I was friends with and I, they, they kind of introduced me to bodybuilding and what said, year was this? Um, 2000, 2013, 2013, 2013, 2014. So it wasn't a magazine. It wasn't like uh, seeing a picture of Jay Cutler. Well, sort of, kind of. I mean, it, I seen these guys, just, you know, local guys in the gym at my mm -hmm. college rec center. Um, and seeing them, I was like, you know, what are they doing? Like, like what, like they're not 
training for a sport. So who are they? What are they doing? Right. And they're not powerlifters. So they told me, Oh, I'm a bodybuilder. And so I kind of started looking up and I, and I typed in on YouTube. Um, one day I was getting ready to go in the gym to train legs and I typed in on YouTube. I, I put bodybuilding motivation just cause I was kind of feeling down that day. I was like, I need something to get me going, uh, for today's leg workout. And first thing that popped up, I clicked on it. And for some reason, that compilation video was just so um, inspiring to me. It just, it resonated so well with me. I've seen, you know, little clips of like Flex Lewis or yeah, Jay Cutler in the video. And I was like, oh my gosh, who are these guys, you know? And I just assumed, I didn't know who they were at all, actually. And I just assumed they were pros or some of the best at what they did. And I, I just thought, you know what, if I dedicate myself to bodybuilding, this new sport, this new endeavor that I know nothing about, if I dedicate myself for the next three to five years like I did in wrestling, I could probably go somewhere. I could probably do something. I think I can truly build a physique in the next three to five years that's going to potentially take me somewhere. And so that's what I did. Coming from that wrestling background, being disciplined and dedicating myself to that first showed me that I could do something else if I was that disciplined and dedicated. So that's what I chose. Was so you're in college, this is off topic. What were your subjects? Like what was your favorite yeah. subject? So when I first went to college, all I was focused on was wrestling. I didn't really, I mean, th that was it. That was, that was my subject. science guy, you weren't really into like, Not at the time, no, I didn't. Math, numbers, nothing. <sighs> to be honest, I, I was <laughs> always so focused on sports and wrestling that it, it was a, you know, I didn't really enjoy all the subjects in high school, so I was more, you know, sneaking out, going to the oh, gym and training. Okay. <laughs> but when I got to college, I realized, okay, life is hitting me, right? Life is smacking me in the face. Uh, I'm a, uh, I'm a man now, and I need to figure out what uh, what path of life I'm going to take. And so, in the meantime, I I ventured into just business. I just was told, you know. Business is good. It'll, it'll help develop some skills, and you'll learn a lot of things that can you can apply to anything in life. Um, which, again, I'm very thankful. I went to and in, in study business, and I got a small degree um, at a, a junior college. But after that, I that's when I found bodybuilding. So I went I went and studied business, got a small degree in it, and then I I found bodybuilding. So I wanted to study more about the body. So I started. Basically, I was kind of in a undergrad physical therapy program, which again, I, I'm not gonna gonna lie, I didn't pursue sure. after a couple of years because again, bodybuilding, bodybuilding was my focus. Right. So, so this is 2013, 14, or yeah. Two th so I went to college in like 2011, and so yeah, I was by 2014 is whenever I decided I want to bodybuild. That's when you did the Indiana show, or no? 2015. 2015. So 2014 in the spring, it was like April of 2014. I committed to being a bodybuilder and I said, I'm going to give myself one full year to learn how to train like a bodybuilder mm -hmm. because I knew how to train like a wrestler. I mean, I, in, a, in an athlete, how do they like, train? It's, I wouldn't call it like CrossFit, but, um, CrossFit. yeah, it's, it's, it's more like, um, true all around athleticism, like, uh, Mr. Ninja warrior is what right. I was always, would always say, you know, I could do a bunch of muscle ups. I could do like, I would do 500 push ups every day. I would do, um, I don't know if you remember the P90 X ab ripper oh, yeah. workout. I, right. I did the ab workout, you know, I just, I, and I would run a lot. So I knew how to stay fit and stuff, but I wanted to take my physique to another level. I wanted to build muscle and truly sculpt it. So that's whenever I decided, okay, I'm going to go from the gym to the library and start studying bodybuilding. Mm. And so I would look up research articles or I would YouTube like Jay Cutler and, and all the Olympians at the time. And um, I, would, I would kind of mimic their workouts in the gym. Did you have a vision board? Um, I know that's a girly right Not line, necessarily right. an actual vision board, yeah. but I knew, like I said, that three to five, I always have a three to five year plan. Like I always- It's very smart. Yeah, I always think to myself, like I always, I always try to have a, a huge, people call it a dream, but a, a massive goal that is seems almost unreachable. But if I can be disciplined enough and dedicate myself every single day, I believe anybody can be great in three to five years. So I just have to lock in <laughs> on what it is I want to do. This is so funny. You say three to five years, whereas, yeah. let's see, you won the junior nationals, which, <laughs> funny story, a uh, mutual friend of ours, my ex- 
fiance. <laughs> You, you, I don't know what uh, happened. You, you showed him some pictures of you. You told him you're going to do a show, and he yeah. said you're not going to yeah. manage, right? And yeah. then maybe, uh, maybe you need a couple more weeks to. Oh, right. To, to so get what in happened shape. after he told you that? Uh, it fired me up. Yeah. But sometimes you need that little kick in the butt. Well, you know? he's an asshole. So. <laughs> nah, nah. But but I remember when I worked at a supplement shop in because we're from you know we're same from hometown. Terrible, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember you would come in. I was like, oh my gosh, like you know, just telling you like I, I think I want to do junior nationals this year. And, and and my coach at the time was saying, you know, maybe I don't know if we should do that show. This is your first year competing. And and I had in my head, I told him, I said, I want to compete at the at the highest level that I should compete at. Right. I think that this is the junior nationals would be like the pinnacle if i could go in there and win that show that's going to be i mean that's that's going to make my year like that's what i'm shooting for but i kept getting told by everybody that new bodybuilding that maybe you should wait it takes a long time to be a bodybuilder for me i said no listen i'm i'm dedicating myself every mm-hmm. single day for this and i know if i give 100 day in day out i can go and i can win and i asked you and i said do you think i should do junior nationals you said absolutely of course. And, and it kind of took me back. I was thinking, wow, like this is the first person that said, yes, like go for it. And come, I mean, you're a pro women's bodybuilder. So it's like she's telling me I should do it. But these other people are telling me maybe I should wait. Maybe I'm not ready for it. And that's when I was like, nah, nah, well, definitely. When I gonna. first saw you, I said, look at this kid. You know, he's got a great physique. Yeah. And you already tell. You can see the passion by how you were mm-hmm. built. And I'm like, of course, did you nationals? And you yeah. did, and you won that. And then after that, everybody's like, who is this kid? Who is Derek Lunsford? Yeah. You were the big name. Yeah. And then you won your pro card at the USA's. You won the uh, heavyweight class, right? And the overall? Um, so in 2017, I won the light heavy class. Light heavy. I just barely squeaked into the light heavy class in 2017. And you Michigan got the State. overall. And yeah. then a week later, you went into the Tampa Pro. Yeah. You came into that. Everybody's like, "There, how do all, I remember you came up, pulled down your, your trunks or whatever to weigh in, and everybody's just like, Steve, why? Big Steve was there, and he's watching. You know, you wind up winning that show, yeah. and you get into the Olympia. Mm-hmm. What was your first experience like on that Olympia, knowing that you're going and you're right there? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I want to I want to mention this. I remember very very clearly that uh, Jose Raymond was another guy I competed with, another 212 pro bodybuilder I've always admired and looked up to. I remember um, I said, hey man, can you give me just a little advice for my first Olympia? And he said, just do your best to soak it all in. Enjoy them every moment you possibly can of this weekend because it's going to fly by like, you know, in two seconds. And so I did my best, but he's exactly right. Like it all just came so quickly that uh, it's hard to really soak it all in. And um, I remember doing many interviews and asked many questions. And uh, yeah, I, I, I truly that year was just on top of the world to just be there and be standing next to these guys that I've been looking up to since 2013, 2014, when I f- found out about bodybuilding and realized, oh shoot, Flex Lewis, you know, 212 champ. I'm standing next to this guy, Jose Raymond, somebody that I also looked up to, you know, for many years. I'm standing next to this guy. All these champions from around the world, the best of the best, I'm standing right next to them. And then to be in the first call out after being an amateur less than two months before that, yeah, you can only imagine how I felt. So were these guys, here you are, a young kid. How old were you yeah. when you came into this show? Joe Weider's Olympia here in Orlando, Florida. A little bit strange coming out of Las Vegas for all of those years. Good evening and welcome to the event that nearly never happened. There's been an absence of a particular group of people on this stage that are back tonight. Tonight I'm here to say, welcome back to Miss Olympia. I the was, first um, Olympia. 
Oh shoot! I was. I think I was twenty. Because you're twenty one now, right? Twenty one now. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I I started when I was twenty one, but I um I'm twenty seven. I'll be twenty eight. I think I was twenty four. Okay. Two thousand seventeen. Yeah. So you're twenty four years old. Mm-hmm. You're walking in. What are these guys like? Yeah. Were they intimidated by you? Because you're a very intimidating uh, person. I, I don't. You know? I don't. Did any of them give you beef? Or <laughs> there's any rivalry backstage? I'm curious. In two thousand seventeen, I, I didn't really feel it. I felt very welcomed right away. Mm-hmm. Actually, okay. um, yeah. So that was nice. But I, I didn't really know what to expect, right? And um, I remember Flex Lewis came up and shook my head and hand and said, "Congratulations, you know, welcome, you know." Uh, that was very nice. Yeah. Wow. And I was like, "Wow, man! Like, what a true champ, right?" And so. Um, that in 2017 for my first Olympia, uh, I definitely felt welcomed. In 2018, I felt like there was a big rivalry. <laughs> yeah, that was really 2018 and at the same you time, came in uh, second. Yeah, I, 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 I that was uh, that wrestling mentality that I was talking about, and that champion mentality of you know I, I'm coming after everybody, you know, and um, rather than just focusing on myself to just um, be the best I could be, I said I'm going to beat this guy and this guy, and you know that's that's great to have that mentality to want to go and win, but um, when you're not focused on yourself, that that could. You know, I was. I think I was looking at Flex as he's a six-time champ at this time, and if if I can go and win, that would be that would be un- unbelievable to many people. And I I still felt like I could do it. I felt physically that I could do it, but I think um, back then um, I needed just a couple more years uh, to get my head straight on on the difference between wrestling and bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. After 2019, because I know that was a very intense year for you. <laughs> yeah. What did you? do after the Olympia? I mean, soul searching wise, how did you regroup? Which, which year? Sorry. 2019. 2019. Yeah, that was, uh, that was my toughest year. Um, you know, coming off of uh, a second plate, everybody would tell me like, man, second plate, that's, that's amazing. But, but when you're on the cusp of getting that title and twice, in yes. And, and being the champion, um, and, and taking second, especially when everybody thinks like, Oh, this guy is probably going to win. Yeah, that was tough. Um, I uh, and then you know, not to mention you know, COVID hit. You know, the pandemic hit right after that, and several several other things uh, in my own personal life, which is only setting you up if you can. Like, I don't believe God's going to put anything in your life that you can't handle first and foremost. Mm-hmm. And so that in itself, these um, whether you call them setbacks or these hurdles or whatever, these obstacles. They're really just setting you up for success because you know God knows you can handle them, and and when you internalize that and you and you focus on allowing these so-called setbacks to shape, mold you, and better your life, better yourself, uh, that's when you can become stronger and and move forward. And that's exactly what I did for the 2020 Olympia. I've said it before. I said. Of course, I was training to win the title, but I focused a lot on making sure that I was able to level up myself, like my own um, mental and spiritual um, strength. Okay. How did you get such a positive mindset? Your your mindset is just incredible. Mm-hmm. I think all athletes need to be aware of their mindset. You know, it doesn't matter what you do as an athlete, as a competitor. Um, that's one of the toughest things, or even a businessman. Like, that's one of the toughest things you could, you need, you can do is, is, um, be in those fields. So you definitely need to be aware of what you're, who you're surrounding yourself with, what you're listening to, what you take to heart. So I don't know. I think, I think, like I said, having those setbacks definitely shaped and molded me to become stronger to where I could be a little bit more resilient. Do you meditate? Um, I pray. You pray. Yeah. Yeah. So God has always been a part of your life, yes. correct? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. That's yeah. very strong. Yeah, I like for that. Sure. <laughs> well, I, I believe, you know, like you said earlier, with God, all things are possible. Absolutely. And he creates a path and he does things for a reason. Mm-hmm. And right. you're very blessed because, yes. again, where you were a few years ago, I know you're very, you know, there's a lot going on. Now you're, you've got the whole world to yeah. you. You've got some great sponsors. You've got a great team. Yeah. You know, as far as training wise now, who are you working with with your training? I know. Han, he's doing, is he doing everything or? Yeah, um, he, he's definitely putting his input in and like telling me, like when I send him updates, he'll, he'll 
um, analyze my physique and he'll see where maybe I'm having a lagging body part and he'll say, okay, I want you to focus on this area a little bit more and he'll tell me some different exercises that he wants me to really focus on and, and make sure I hammer when I'm in the gym training. So yeah, he, he's, um, he's been there for me ever since the beginning of this year. What's your lifts? Because you're strong as shit. Yeah. Yeah. Best lifts. Um, well, I don't Favorite know. Favorite exercise. To be 100% honest, this isn't just, uh, I'm just saying this, this is 100% honest. Since the beginning of bodybuilding, my favorite thing to train is whatever I'm weakest at, whatever is lagging. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. in bodybuilding, we're trying to create and sculpt the perfect physique. And so if I have a lagging body part, whether it be arms, chest, back, legs, calves, whatever, I want to focus on what I'm weakest at and just hammer that. And that, and that's what I'm, yeah. And I, I'm glad you mentioned, you know, who's training and who's helping me with my, um, training is that that's exactly what Hani, uh, focuses on too, is that, um, he doesn't just give me praise like, Oh, Derek, you have a great back or, or, or whatever. He says, no, this is where we can get better. And this is what I want you to go do to get better. Now you consider bodybuilding like a canvas and we're artists, right? I think you said it, you said it yeah. best the other day. So yeah. Uh, I really liked how you. So that. it took me some time to figure out, okay, I have this wrestling competitive uh, mindset, um, but I, I, I feel like I'm missing something. What am I missing here? What, what am I not seeing about bodybuilding that, um, where I can get better, I can, I can focus better on? And that was my body is my canvas. I'm, I'm not uh, out here to fight someone else or wrestle someone and pin them and beat them. I'm here to present what I've, I've built. And so the way I see it is literally like an art, art show, right? It like you're building show. your work of art, I'm building my work of art, completely different pieces of art, but we're on the same stage presenting them and we have judges saying, you built the best piece of art. And that's, that's truly the way I look at it now. I think your nickname should be Quadzilla. Yeah. <laughs> you have, well, you've got amazing quads. Jesus. Yeah. They don't end. How do you find they pants are, to fit those things? They, they are fun to train. So you ask what I like to train. I do uh, like to train legs. How much weight do you do on leg press? Uh, generally, I can do on a, on a light day. I'd probably a do light like, day. probably do like 11 or 12 plates on each side. I'm not sure how much that is. I want a heavy day. What's a heavy day? Uh, maybe like, maybe just like 14, 15 plates on each side. Jesus. So. Do you do low rep, high rep? Uh, pretty high rep though. What's high I, rep? I like for you? to do like at least fifteen reps, probably. Fifteen. Um, so you yeah. don't do like fifty reps, twenty reps, kind of deal. Yeah. Some. Well, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I'll do like <sighs> drop sets, or or yeah, I'll do drop sets to where I'll do. 30, 40, 50 reps, or even pyramid sets where I'll start with a lighter weight, work my way up, add, adding weight, and then I'll come back down. How did you build such incredible legs? Yeah. Um, I well, mean, you just, I'm sorry, but it's like when you turn to the side, uh -huh. the way your hamstrings and your, your clamshell ass, uh -huh. that's like <laughs> genetics. That's the first time I've heard that one. <laughs> well, even when you're like, you know, have, a, yeah. even in an off season, you still have that yeah. clamshell Straight at glutes. Yeah, uh, I trained with uh, several other you know pro bodybuilders in the past who have who helped me tremendously. Um, for the 2018 Olympia, I, I trained with Ben Pikulski and um, he he helped me a lot back then. So we really hammered legs. He had amazing legs. So we we really went went to work um, back in 2018. Um, and since then, yeah, I just um, I, I truly love to train legs. Like legs seem to be one body part that is hard for most bodybuilders to, to want to train or to develop. And so I like to, to be, um, to be that guy that likes to do things that other people don't like to do. Do you have people vomit when you train with them, when they train with you? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. A lot. Like they try to I'll, I'll do you. And yeah. And, and I'm sure they're watching this and they're going, Oh yeah. And what about, uh, okay. So what's, I was, I saw a video doing research with you and guy. Did he ever train legs with you or no? I think he's too scared to train he's legs. He's too scared. Me. Yeah, you called him a pussy. Like, <laughs> I did not call him that. No? But, but uh, <laughs> he, he told me, I, well, yeah, anyway. Guy he's is cool. funny. Yeah, guy he's is, a cool guy, but he's, he's hardcore. For, he, he does train hard. Yeah. Um, but uh, he's yeah, we need to get a leg work in. Yeah. <laughs> They said you skipped out or something? No, I'm kidding. Oh, this guy. Come on. <laughs> this guy, no pun intended. No, that was a couple of years ago. I think I was coming into the 2019 Olympia prep, and uh, we were traveling. So normally when I travel, I try not to train legs just because I'd rather be home and, and just ha be well hydrated and have uh, the right food in me to be able to 
to go in and, and hammer a good leg session. Not saying I won't, but that day I was supposed to train like chest or something like that, and he was supposed to train legs. And so he, he called me out and said, well, you know, why don't you train legs with me? I said, why don't you train chest with me? Right. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. I, no, guy's a, guy's a great dude. He's great. He, he's he really is a great guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that's funny. Um, who was the best person you ever trained with pro-wise? Uh, Not Ben. Hmm. Anybody else but Ben. <laughs> I saw you recently train with Flex Lewis. Yeah. Um, man, I've just trained with so many people. Now, you ever trained with Jay Cutler? No, I never trained with him. You remind me a lot of Jay Cutler. I, I, I would love to train with him at some point. Uh, he was one of those guys who... Probably more him than anyone that I would watch his YouTube videos mm -hmm. uh, to learn how to train like a bodybuilder. So I would just literally watch his video and go straight to the gym and just mimic his workout. Um, so... Name me top five bodybuilders that uh, you admire. Yeah. Five. Um, and I'm, I'll take it back uh, for when I was younger, too, when I was coming up. Um, I already mentioned Jose Raymond. I, I, did, I did really admire him. Um, I felt like he worked real hard. I love the Boston Mets. Yeah, and, yeah. and he always gives back and, and, and tells it like it is. So sure. I, I admired Jose. Um, Flex Lewis, of course, no question. That guy. Um, hey, yeah. real quick on the Flex Lewis. So uh -huh. I don't know if it was 2018 or 17. He says something to you on stage, and you kind of like <laughs> smile. I know you're not going to say it, <laughs> but uh, did he be like, "Hey, good job, buddy"? Right? I mean, that's <laughs> not quite. I didn't think so. Anyway, <laughs> all right. So Flex uh, Lewis. Yeah, Flex oh. Lewis. Um, and of course, Jay Color. Jay and Flex, those two guys, um, I admire tremendously. Um, let's see. Brandon Curry. I like the way he, he carries himself. I, I like his his flow uh, of his physique, too, as well. Um, let me think one more. Do, 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 I know, right? How about you? No. I yeah, you're a bodybuilder. Oh, come on now. I admire, no, for real. That's, that's why um, I love that we can sit here and talk because, you know, had we taken it back, what, five, six, seven years ago, I would never imagine I'd be sitting right here right now talking to you. I can't I, imagine I'm sitting here with, uh, yeah. you know, the Mr. 212 Olympia or the Open because if you go to the Open. <laughs> That yeah. would be cool. That would be cool. And um, I'll tell it just, just like I see it is that when Hani and I talked, I mentioned to him, because I, I want him to know where I'm coming from. I want him to know how I feel and what um, positive or negative concerns. So when I said to him, I said, you know, maybe my maybe I need to take some time off in the off season um, to not grow uh, into the open. Maybe I need to just just, you know, give my body some time to rest and that way I can stay in the 212. And he said, listen, you need to keep growing. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay. Because the last couple of years I had taken a, a little bit of time to just take it easy a little bit and come back into a prep and train super hard. He said, no, we're going to train hard all year. And if I think that you need to go open, then we will switch gears and go open. But as of right now, you're 212. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, like, you know, that's all I, that's all I needed to know was the fact that I don't need to stop training hard. Cause after all, I love to train hard. I, I felt like I maybe in the past, if I kept going in the direction I was going, then I would, you know, grow out of the 212. But no, he said, if that's the case, we'll switch gears and we'll go open. But as of right now, you're 212. We're going to nail it. You it awesome. are a freaking beast. And again, your training tactics, your whole positive mindset, <laughs> your posing's phenomenal. Listen, you have one of the best vacuums I've ever seen. You don't have that distended waist, the, you know, the, the bloated gut. How do you, how did you practice the vacuum? That's really hard for some people to achieve. Yeah, so not all of my motivation comes from Olympia competitors. Sometimes it comes from just a local friend that I'm training in the gym with. So uh, in Terre Haute, where we're from, um, I knew another bodybuilder, another NPC competitor who could hit a vacuum, and I couldn't. And for some reason, that just kind of stuck with me. I'm like, what? maybe I need to start practicing that. So um, he, he was one guy that I, I knew could do it and would do it every day, even in the off season. And I thought, man, I cannot figure this out. But for, for whatever reason, it just drove me. And I just felt like I needed to keep practicing. And then that was from 2016 to 2017. Um, and that was kind of like the highlight of that year was me being able to hit a vacuum with the size. So thank God for him to uh, give me that extra motivation. You have an impressive vacuum. Yeah. My God, as soon as you hit that, it's like, 
game over. Yeah, quick tip too is to um, to hit that first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. Really? Yeah. So for anyone out there that's trying to figure out how to vacuum, I could really never figure it out when I was training or like after a, a workout. It was just for whatever reason, whether it be the water I was drinking during my workout or food or just um, training in general, I just couldn't really hit a vacuum very well after a workout. But whenever I started practicing first thing in the morning, um, I would get better and better and better. And at first I wasn't that good at it, but after a couple of weeks, I got much, much better. How does your girlfriend, excuse me, fiance, soon to be your wife, <laughs> yeah. how does she feel about the whole Olympia stuff? I mean, yeah. she's very supportive, isn't she? You know, um, I've asked her that many times. And in the beginning, I the very first thing I asked her, I was like, do you want me to do this? Do you want me to look like these guys? Because this is what I want to do. And I would love it if you would support me. But what do you like? What are your honest thoughts? And she said, "Look, I love you, and I, I want you to do whatever you want to do." But yeah, that's she likes the size. She likes bodybuilding. Um, but I love more than anything what she said this year at this year's Olympia. I came off stage. I came, gave her a hug, whatever, and she said, "I cannot believe this is our life." And that to me, I was like, "Wow!" Like you know what? You're right. This this is amazing. Like not only do I get to do something that I'm super passionate about and I love, but also the person I'm with is super supportive of it. You're too. swell, mate. So, yeah. just got a house recently right yeah last year yeah. um september good for you and uh, when is the wedding uh well, well she has about two three weeks of school left and then she'll be a physical therapist so when that's done and over with we will start planning all that i don't put you on the spot <laughs> <laughs> all right so when yeah. the olympia got moved to orlando last year i'm sure mm -hmm. you're like oh yeah because it's right there in your backyard yeah. i mean you can just drive to it yeah, I, I love Vegas, and if, if it ever goes back to Vegas, I'm in full support of that. But if it's in Orlando, I'm in full support of that, what too. What did you think well, of this year's Olympia and what they did in four and a half weeks? First and foremost, thank you, Jake Wood, for being the man that you are to put this on. I mean, I, I don't even know what um, to even say to that. I mean, I can only imagine the headache that it, that it took and the team, it, it, I'm sure it was a full team of people that got together to put this on. And I, I just can't thank them enough. I said that at the Olympia, you know, as an athlete, I am so grateful that we actually had the platform last year to do um, what we love to do. And as far as the, the place, the venue and all of that, I, I told him, I said, it, it was super easy super easy to get around very smooth as for an athlete to go do their tanning to go to the room to go to the actual venue and for pre-judging and finals super smooth mm -hmm. super easy mm -hmm. and so for that um i really liked it being where it was in orlando and that's in our backyard so. all right what can we expect from you from this yeah. year's olympia yeah what kind of package are we looking at yeah much fuller much rounder and um even better conditioning, like sharper, right? Like uh, last year I came in a bit flat and the year before um, I had a lot of water. So I think this year is gonna be the time where we're gonna fix those issues. Uh, me being with Hani now and Hani ha overseeing everything that I'm doing um, from um, training to the supplements to the diet, everything. Um, I believe I'm gonna come in much rounder, fuller and that sharp crispness. Now you're one, I'm gonna say one of the 
bodybuilders that tends to go do a lot of posing. Like I, mm-hmm. I don't really see a lot of other people, but I'm seeing you uh-huh. like on a lot of posters and stuff. How yeah. do you, does this prepare you for the Olympia as far as being on yeah. stage all the time and you know, you're hitting yeah. certain poses and everything? It absolutely does because there was uh, a time where I, I didn't, I never take too much time off, but if I take a couple months extra away from the stage, being on stage, whether it be speaking or posing or whatever, um, it, it, it takes some time to getting uh, of getting used to, you know? So for me to be able to be on stage a couple times through my prep, um, definitely helps me prepare for whenever I am in shape and ready to be uh, on the Olympia stage. But also I just like it. Like I love to travel. I love to meet new people that have the same passion as me. It's, it's, it's really just a win whenever I'm out doing these kind of events. You How know? often are you, po- I mean, posing wise, cause mm-hmm. run me through your typical day. How, how, many, times I- do, how many times a day do you train? Uh, to look like this. See, right now I'm only training once a day and, and that's just to, uh, just, just to give my body a little bit more of, of a rest. Like mm-hmm. we're not full force prep mode, but when it is time to, to crack it down, I'll be doing cardio probably uh, twice a day and training for a couple hours throughout the day. So my day revolves around my training and, and food. Um, so I have a full schedule. I even, I even kind of map out when I'm resting too. So my life really revolves around bodybuilding. Do you ever take a vacation? Do you take a break for yourself? I didn't this time. I got I got motivated after this year's Olympia, and I said I'm just going to go back to gym. I don't even go back nah, to I don't even gym. want to take a vacation. I'm I'm going to go train. Now going backwards so. a little bit. 2020 began with the COVID and stuff. It was hard. Florida yes. was. You almost got stuck, didn't you? Um. Yeah. Wow. So the year before, I did take a vacation. Um, I went to the Philippines a couple times uh, to vacation. That's where my fiance is from, her and her family, and. Um, when I was there this last time, between 2019, 2020, it was, you know, New Year's is whenever I usually would go. And the last time I was over there, we were on our flight on our way back to, uh, we had a layover in Shanghai. When we got to Shanghai, China, um, we found out that all of the rest of the flights had got canceled for the day. And for like, I guess the rest of the week, because there was a volcano that blew in the Philippines. So the volcano almost stopped us from getting on our flight in the Philippines. So we get to Shanghai and we fly to Chicago. We get to Chicago and we find out, oh, there's a travel ban, right? Travel ban in China. Wow. So, I mean, who knows? I could still be there. You could still be there. And not bodybuilding. Right. You know, could you imagine? Uh, Yeah, you would. We you would barely. not be a happy boy. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so tell me three things about yourself that nobody yeah. knows, like you've not said to anybody. Oh, my gosh. Like some of the things I was mentioning last night about being in uh, I don't remember. plays you gotta, and musicals. You got to say it again. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was in I did a lot of different things when I was younger. You know, I tried almost every sport uh, besides football. Believe it or not, I can't believe I'd never tried that. Now wait a minute, you're a pro golfer, aren't you? Yeah, I wish I was a pro golfer. No, 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 no. I heard about you. Your mom <laughs> said you love golf and you're yeah. very good at it. Yeah, I, I enjoy golf. You know, uh, I made a post not too long ago. I said um, I had a shirt. One of my shirts I'm going to be releasing soon is uh, it says um, uh, life like bodybuilder lifestyle. And um, in the in the caption, I wrote "hobby golf." So yeah, that's that's one thing that I really do enjoy. Not to take too seriously, because I'm the type of person where if I'm doing something, I normally go 100% all in with right. it. Golf is one of those things where if I do, I'm going to end up hating it. And so I I I go about 75% in. You know, mm. <laughs> I just do it because I like it. You know, okay. some people just go to the gym because they just like it. They don't, you know, they don't want to push the envelope. So they might compete, at, um, you know, in the NPC or the or like you know men's physique or something like that. They don't want to push it to that next level. Um, whereas me, I'm usually like I said, an all-in guy. But with golf, I'll be too frustrated and it'll probably drain my bank too account. Too frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> they used to have uh, golf tournaments, charities that Sean Ray would put together and get a bunch of golfers and stuff. Yeah, we should pros. do it again. You should do it again. I'm down. I'll be yeah. Bob Chicarello. Yeah, he thinks he's the shit when it comes to <laughs> golf. But, yeah, you, you'll show him up. Um, how was your family with the bodybuilding? Now, yeah. I actually, in your first Olympia, flew on the same plane with your grandmother going there and back. Yeah. And I knew it was her because she had this big picture of your face <laughs> on her shirt. And, man, she will beat somebody up if they see oh, the wrong yeah. thing about you. Oh yeah. yeah. My grandmother 
Well, and my mother, they're my two biggest fans without question. And I mean, your they, mom competed. Yeah, she competed last year in Mel Chansey's show, the, the one I was just at uh, last weekend. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, I was super proud of her. But, no, my, my grandmother, my, my grandfather, and uh, my mom, they follow me everywhere. I mean, not to take anything away from, from my father either. I mean, he, he comes to my Olympias too now and stuff. But, um, yeah, they uh, they kind of like stalk me and they they follow they me wherever I go, <laughs> whether it be my oh. the my NPC shows and and the Mister USA or whether it be Tampa Pro or whether it be the Mister Olympia, they they followed me to to every single event I've done. Are we gonna be able to see more training videos of you out yeah. there for the fans? For sure, uh, especially as we ramp up the the prep for this year's Mister Olympia. Um, I'm I'm thinking maybe I should ramp up my own YouTube again. I think you should, yeah, yeah because yeah. you have you you really know training yeah. stuff. I mean, you train with some of the greatest. Yeah in the world yeah i mean look at your physique it just speaks yeah. Yeah. volume you know but i'm really excited for you with the 212 olympia i think you're going to yeah. do very well yeah. i mean who is the biggest threat to you yeah. right now well look sean, Honestly. Cl sean clarita is the champ okay so he his name needs to be mentioned first uh, if nothing else out of respect but he is uh, an incredible bodybuilder and what he brought last year was was crazy you know it, it, he really looked good Kamal from the year before he's coming back again this year um, he's always going to be a threat uh, his conditioning is always really really good I think this last year he came in a little bit full and sacrificed a little bit of, of that sharpness um, you got George who also placed ahead of me this last year looks phenomenal um, and then you got Keon also coming in this year too but uh, truthfully I do believe if um, I come in at 100% and we nail it, I, I believe I'm, I'm going to walk away with the title. Yeah. I, I hope. You know, that's, that's, Ke that's what we're Keon's for. Keon's pretty impressive, but we still have not seen him at his best yet. Yeah, I agree. I so, agree. you know, and he has to requalify. Yeah. So yep. that will be interesting. Yeah, I think um, I, I don't know what happened last year, but it would have been awesome to see him at the at the Olympia last year. Um, yeah, would have. Yeah. Yeah. What would you give somebody who is just starting out as an amateur or, or even a pro wants to aim yeah. to be as big as you and get the mu yeah. muscle size? What would you tell them? Like, what was what's one of the things that you wish you knew when you first started? Um, I didn't know it, but I did believe it. But um, Anything is possible. I'm serious about that. I just spoke on behalf of making my own dreams come true at Mel Chansey's show this last weekend is that uh, very few people really believe that they can make their dreams come true, and that's with anything. But in this sport, you really can. And that's what I, I spoke at the show. I said, it starts on the NPC stage right here, right now. I said, being there reminded me of the very first time I ever competed and the energy and the excitement and the uncertainty even. Um, that, that's, that's the thrill of your very first show or when you're just getting into the sport. Um, I just want people out there to know that it really is possible to make their dreams come true and to be able to travel the world because that's another dream of mine. I wanted to travel the world. I wanted to move to Florida. We did that, you know, and be among some of, the, of my idols who I now call peers and friends. Um, it is absolutely possible with the, the dedication, the discipline, the sacrifice, and the work, you know. Align yourself with the right people in your life, and I'm not just talking about coaches and friends who are going to pump you up, but I'm talking about, for me, spiritually too. It's very important that I have the right kind of people in my life to help guide me through it all. So, What is your biggest pet peeve in the gym? <laughs> Curls in the squat have... rack. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be 100% honest, um, just... I don't really see it a lot anymore, but, you know, sometimes in the past when I was in college, I would see even myself just being like kind of a punk, you know, just, just a little bit of rudeness or, or leaving weights like like you, you get done on the leg press and, and there's a, a stack of, uh, of, of weights on there. It might be eight, nine, ten plates on each side. And who knows? You could have a, a young girl or an old lady or something like that come over who can't lift that weight and they want to use right. that machine but this this guy just left you know 10 plates on the squat on the leg press you know things like that okay so let's pretend so you're in the gym and you see this guy walk away and he leaves 10 yeah. plates on the leg yeah. press what would you do would you say something um or would you just go in there and just use it to be 100 percent honest i don't really pay attention i'm kind of focused on my own, but if i do see it if you saw it, I, right. I probably would say something what, you know put your weights away i mean i'll honestly i'd probably step in and even help him i'd be like you don't put your weights away and he'd probably say, all right, you know, it'd be, be cool with it. But, um, yeah. Well, mm. I'm not as nice as you. I'd probably throw a dumbbell at his ass. <laughs> you know, I, I actually would yell at them. 
I would if they yeah. walk away, left the stuff on there, I'd be like, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. You know, I just respect everybody else because yeah. my grandmother trains here. Exactly. Don't put the fucking weights on. Exactly. Excuse my language. No, um, you know. You know, listen, not on everything, though. I, there are some things where, you know, like if, if somebody leaves, like, a plate on something where everybody can lift that weight. You know what I'm saying? There's some machines where, uh, okay, everybody just leaves a plate or two on, on, on leg press. But if you're leaving, like, eight, nine, ten plates on leg press and, and you know there's other people in the gym that's going to use it that can't lift that, don't be a jerk. Don't be a jerk. Don't be a jerk. Come on. Truly said by Derek Lansford. I mean, yeah. let's get real. Well, I ask you that because you're such a training, like you mm-hmm. love the gym and training. So I wanted to know, yeah. like, what was it that set you off? Yeah, and, and you got to remember, too, it's it's not your gym if you're walking into it unless you own it, right? So okay. you got to remember that you need to be respectful of the people that own the gym and are there every day to keep the place running. And so the other day, um, it did kind of suck the other day for me. Um, it was my bad. I forgot uh, the time that on Sundays, whatever, they close a little bit early where I train. And so, um, you know, I had 15 minutes left. They went over the intercom and I was like, ah, crap. So I, I got a few extra sets in and the guy came around. I was the last guy in the gym and, and he told me, oh, don't worry about it. I said, hey, listen, I respect it. I get it. You're just here to do your job. I, I, I'll leave. No problem. You know, so anyway. You're a sweetheart. No, I just think you need to be respectful is all right. Right. Well, some people yeah. will milk, milk it to as much as they can with the time. Sometimes if I'm on prep, maybe I'll be like, hey, man, can I have an extra couple cents? I sets? would. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Because well, I was already done with my work anyway. So. Yeah. How much cardio do you do now? Like what? 30 right now, minutes? It just depends on how I feel, how I'm looking and what my weight is. So if uh, right now, probably like four or five days a week, 20, 20 minutes, 30 well, minutes. What's the biggest mistake you see guys prepping for shows do? Mm-hmm. in the industry I mean but you're like oh my god I can't believe he did that I don't I don't know because I'm not there but I keep hearing people cheating on their diet I cannot believe that I, I, I just I, I, to me that doesn't make sense right and what do you consider cheating like eating a whole pizza or because some people have different <sighs> things of cheating okay if I have a coach I have a coach for a reason sure I'm there to listen. I'm an athlete. I'm the one that's going to execute what the plan that's laid out. And if you tell me that I need to eat this and do this much cardio and do this in training, if I don't do it, that's on me. I don't understand how people can deviate from that plan. Wouldn't you feel terrible about yourself not yeah. executing what you're supposed to do? And if you don't trust the person that you're listening to, then why are they your coach? So to me, it just it blows my mind. And I, I hear it on all levels. It's not the NPC. There's a lot of NPC competitors that work harder than some of the pros, I think. Truly. I agree. Uh, so, in closing, is yeah. there anything you want to say to your fans, family, loved ones? <laughs> Any positive words of Derek Lunsford? Yeah. Well, um, I'm just thankful for everybody out there that does support me and, and, and truly has my back. Um, I mentioned, you know, my mother, my grandmother, my entire family is super supportive. It's not just them two. It's, it's all of them. Um, my fiance as well is super supportive. And, and shout out, congratulations to you, Jelson, for for graduating. Um, obviously, my sponsors and, and Honey Rambod for supporting me, Evo Your Nutrition, um, Gasp, Better Bodies Clothing, also have supported me for several years. Michael. So Yeah, yeah I MJ, reached out to Michael guy. about you because I wanted to yeah. know some stuff. Yeah, good things or bad things, what did he say? He said lots of bad things, actually. Really? I believe so. No, he I loves believe. your mindset. Yeah. He knows that you're a fighter and a go-getter. Yeah. You know, he has so much respect for you. And, and Well, real quick on that one, um, I guess something that just popped into my mind was that I do still have that, I used to call it a champion mindset, that, that fighter, that warrior mentality, but I don't have to express it. I can just internalize it and just know that that's... That's what I believe. That's who I am. Yeah. So I guess uh, I guess that clears that up a little bit mm-hmm. better. From, I think but. you're the Captain America of the industry. You're <laughs> yeah. a great ambassador of the sport. You yeah. really are. Yeah. So many and and very intimidating. Let me tell yeah. you, you're very intimidating. Oh, uh, well, I don't but, try to be. <laughs> but you're so sweet and gentle, yeah. like a teddy bear. Yeah, I don't try to be intimidating. Uh, but Captain America, that would be cool. Uh, Mr. Definitely. USA, that kind of goes. That's right. I like that. So, how can we find you on social media and all yep. that kind of? And your shirts yes. that are coming out soon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My own shirts. Uh, I'll be posting them on my website, Um 
my Instagram. I actually got a TikTok the other day. I started TikTok. It. Yeah, I'm not. Are you doing videos? Well, some stuff? training Dance? videos and stuff oh. like that. So both of those are at Derek Lunsford underscore. Um, yeah, so go on that, and then of course Derek Lunsford on YouTube. Uh, I'll be ramping that up this year for this year's. Please do. Prep. We want to see yeah. more videos of you. Yep, I want to as well. So yeah, yeah that'll be getting posted. You have as a well. huge fan base, and yeah. they just you're very inspirational. Yeah, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Well, Derek, yeah. thank you so much for being on my show. Yeah, yeah it was it's exciting. An honor. I love it. Exciting. Well, sorry to make you talk for so long, but I just no. love hearing your story. Yeah, thank it's amazing. you. Yeah, thank you, honey. Yeah. Rockstar out.